Leading enterprise customers trust Tidal to manage their most critical applications and dependencies. Today we're going to see how Tidal makes use of REST APIs, using Tidal's built-in API to allow applications to request Tidal resources, and using the web services adapter to allow Tidal to request an application's resources. Application programming interfaces, or APIs, allow applications to exchange data and functionality in a secure way without detailed knowledge of how that API operates under the covers. Using standard APIs with Tidal allows us to embed Tidal in other processes, enable applications to leverage Tidal's advanced scheduling functionality, and avoid custom development and manual scheduling for applications which don't have any scheduling functionality. A RESTful API provides a flexible, lightweight way to integrate applications and has emerged as the most common method for connecting components in microservices architectures. Tidal utilises REST APIs in two ways. Tidal's built-in API allows an application to communicate with Tidal resources via REST, allowing the application to perform tasks such as controlling or monitoring workflows. The Tidal Web Services Adapter allows Tidal to make REST calls to applications where a published adapter does not exist, allowing those applications to be orchestrated by Tidal in workflows, just like any other job. The Tidal Embedded REST API allows an application to communicate with Tidal using secure REST requests. This means that an application can execute calls to Tidal which make use of Tidal's functionality, for example, releasing a workflow or monitoring the status of processing. All of this is achieved without the need for the user interface. The Tidal Web Services Adapter is used for making calls to a REST API enabled application. The adapter makes secure calls to the target application, it constructs the web services call, it makes the call and monitors that call for results. The success or failure of the request, indicated by the return codes, allows downstream processing to continue or not. So let's take a look at a couple of examples in a demo to see how these features could be used. We're going to imagine a fictional software company which wants to automate their build and release cycle for a new version of their software. They want the trigger to this cycle to come from outside of Tidal, so they're going to start the release cycle by calling the Tidal inbound REST API. When the new release is accepted for production, the marketing department wants to kick off a campaign to advertise the new release, starting with a message on Twitter. This will involve a Tidal REST adapter job making requests to the Twitter REST API in order to make a tweet. Obviously the stages involved are greatly condensed and simplified, but provide examples of how REST APIs can communicate between Tidal and applications. So the developers have completed their work for now and are going to invoke a curl command. This could be performed by another application or shell script, of course. The curl command will communicate with Tidal's inbound REST API using HTTP and REST, and will launch a set of jobs to begin the build process. Here we can see the jobs have started. Tidal also has built-in documentation and testing facilities for the whole set of APIs. We just need to go to Help, API Docs, and select the method that we would want to test. In this case, it would be job, and the method would be insert. And from there, you get the formatted XML, so you just need to fill in the blanks. So that would be job ID, for example, and the start date that you wish to use. So the curl command has kicked off the build process, and we can monitor that. If we just expand that, we can see it's starting to run, and we could, of course, use something like our PERT diagram view to see how that's progressing. This shows how the application or user can communicate with Tidal using the inbound REST API. To demonstrate the Tidal REST adapter making outbound requests to another application, let's look at another example. The new release has been built and the marketing team want to announce the release to the world. They send an email to the Tidal instance asking for the announcement to be made via Twitter. Tidal has an event, which we can see here, and it monitors a mailbox for the specific message subject. An associated job action triggers the REST adapter web services job, which sends the tweet request to Twitter. So let's kick that off now. 
So we'll send the email here. And over here in job activity, we should see that that job has completed. And we can monitor that, the success of that in two places. So firstly, by checking the job, we can see the output for that job from the REST request. We can see the uh, possibility to override that with a web service request here. And we can look at the success of that over in Twitter. So there you can see the release that's just been made. And that concludes our demonstration. We have demonstrated Tidal's embedded API and how it can be used by your applications to perform common functions in Tidal without the need for the user interface. All of this is done completely within the context of Tidal's comprehensive security model. We've also seen how we can include any application in our workflows using the Tidal Web Services adapter, even if that application doesn't have a dedicated Tidal adapter. This concludes the demonstration of Tidal's embedded REST API and the Web Services adapter. If you'd like more information on the services that Tidal has to offer, please visit us at tidalsoftware.com or contact us at info at tidalsoftware.com. Thank you.